my first live streaming yes so it's kind of a lesson or jam and I will talk something about everything I used to play you know chords and scales to play blues yes so well I was just playing a jam in the key of A I'm using just let me know if it's I'm using this seventh chord, which is like the standard seventh, but I play like this. Yes, I don't use this fifth. I use this. It sounds more bluesy to me than this. Even it's, it's the same, you know, it's the same uh, notes we play, yeah. But so we don't. I don't play the root here with the string one, so it's kind of more, sounds more bluesy to me. So I prefer to use this. I, I used to play this chord, this seventh chord, or this famous ninth. Be careful with this because it's. To me, yeah, it's, this is a very personal, it's subjective, you know, it's a very personal thinking, you know, it's, it sounds kind of dark, you know. Seventh, yeah, a little more happy, we can say. This is more dark, more. Also, I use the 13th chord, yeah. I use this 13th more when I play jump or a shuffle, you know? Yeah, then the D9th. I use this. So it's, it's a 7th, but I add the 6th here. I hope you can see, you know, this is the shape. Actually, the, the real fingering because it's a jazz chord, it's a chord we're using jazz. The, 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 the jazz fingering is this, you know. I use index major finger in fret 5 because it's an A, and then major, major third and six, you know. Uh, sorry, a root uh, minor seventh, major third, and the six. So we have that crash between the minor 
minor seven and the six, you know, that's the, that's the sound, you know. But I play with the bar or with my thumb here. It's a beautiful chord, I use it a lot for, as I told you, the shuffles and, and uh, jumps, yeah, or so. triad too instead of playing the chord you play the triad with three notes only yeah? okay, it sounds like the old school shuffle swing yeah like the six you can before go to the D yeah so that's idea you know with only one note but uh, if you play using the triad kind of you need to practice because this index is not there you know it's one fret before yeah so you have to pr practice your stretching here but it's so beautiful as I told you so yeah. scale with a blue note uh, yes so the question so yes I use the minor pentatonic scale but I you have to be careful with uh, uh, to sound more bluesy that that's a thing I discover after playing and playing, and you can find it here on YouTube, you know. I'm not the only who teach this. But uh, look this, when you play the minor pentatonic scale, of course, you can add one of the blue notes, because we have at least two blue notes, or three, but the, the fifth flat is one of the blue notes, so you play the blue scale. When The other uh, in super important blue note is the major third. If you if you pay attention, I discovered this watching my own videos. Uh, when I play the minor pentatonic scale, here when I arrive to the minor third, I used to play a quarter bending. Look. You know, I always do this, and I say, okay, why I do this? Yes, of course, because this is the minor third, you know. And if you play over major blues, you know, dominant blues, you use the major third, not the minor third. So you have a crash there between the minor third of the minor pentatonic scale and the major third of the of the chord, the, the dominant chord. So well, that's a blue note, you know. It's uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's part of the blues sound, that crash between the minor pentatonic scale. Also, I have uh, students that they, they ask me, hey Martin, uh, why you use uh, 
a minor scale, which is the pentatonic, over a major chord. Can you do that? Yeah, yes, it works in blues, you know. Uh, it's part of the blues sound, of the blues feeling, you know, that crash between. But if you pay attention, uh, it's hard to keep if you if you play if you don't do anything here. It's it's kind of uh, weird, you know. It's good, but it's you have to be careful. So the solution I found to this to this is just play a quarter bending. So uh, it's not the minor third, it's not the major third. It's something in the middle and sounds super bluesy because it's kind of a slide, you know. If you are playing a slide, look, pay attention. Of course, you can play directly the, ma the major third, you know. It's like, uh, yeah? Just a uh, hammer or slide to the major, major third, and you won't have any problem because if, the, if, if it's a dominant chord, major third is it's, it's a note of, of the major chord, you know. Blue note, I don't know this sounds good everything is okay it's my first live youtube live uh, streaming so i hope it is not too high the the volume of the amplifier i don't know so uh yes i use minor pentatonic scale with that major third or, or that quarter bending when i do this the fourth, major third, minor third. So you you have to try to find the intervals uh, as much as possible times, you know. Uh, major third is here, you can find it by octave, you know. Seventh, it's another thing I use. Uh, yes, I play a lot of arpeggio. That's a great arpeggio. Yeah, always mixed with pentatonic scale, you know, because to, to keep that blues feel, you know. Um, uh, arpeggio seventh, yeah, and chromatic notes in the middle, you know. with the scales. I mean, you can stay in the pentatonic scale of A for the, the 12 bars, but I prefer <clears throat> to change, to follow the chords with the scales. So when I play D, when I go to D, I usually play the position, it's the one, two, three, the four position of D, which is yeah, minor pentatonic okay. with the blue note, and of course you can add that that same feeling I told you between the minor and major third. It's here, minor third, major third. Yeah? Minor third, major third, major third, it's it's super sweet, you know, because it's a major third, you know. And fits perfect with the D, you know, because we use the major third in this D. So yeah, quarter bending from minor third. If you add the, that trick 
that thing between the minor major third, I mean, you play directly the major third or you play something in the middle, everything comes, everything will, the, the scale, you know, the pentatonic scale will, will sound, I'm not, I don't want to say better, but more sweet, you know, more bluesy, you know, if you play straight the minor scale, it's kind of weird, you know, because that minor third. you can change the position. And when uh, I go to E, E seventh, like the traditional position, or E dark ninth, I use same concept, you know, just I play position four of E, you know, position one, Position two, position uh, three, sorry, position four, no, position three I use, sorry, because I try to play it all in the same block, you know, so anyway, you can use any of the five positions, it's up to you, you know, because at the end we play the same five notes, yes, of the of the pentatonic scale, but I use major third, minor third of E, blue note, and the quarter bend. I play arpeggio, 7th, 2 of E, it sounds more, not so bluesy, more jazzy, but if you, if you overlap well, or if you blend well with uh, the arpeggio, with the uh, pentatonic scale, it sounds more blues, you know, you can use any, you can, yeah, E, or this position of arpeggio. The principal, that's a good question, Jose Diaz. You speak Spanish, Jose? I speak Spanish too. Um, the principal target note, I try, I don't know very well, you know, because now I try to play and play and play and play. Si, sí, hablas español, bueno. Um, but the major, that, um, the third, minor major third, it's a good, let's say, uh, pivot point when you change that between scales, you know, that major third is a good, it's a good, uh, uh, yes, uh, target note, as you said, you know, it's, a, uh, I don't know, I will play something, so let's figure it out together, you know. minor major third of D, so I use a um, You can use minor major third or the root. Root is super good, you know. Just be careful, don't start always from the root, you know, because remember you have the octaves and you can find the root in a different place. It will be more, it will sound less predictable, let's say, you know, uh, because 
beginners especially they they uh, used to start always in the root you know in the bass like. it's good but be careful don't do it all the time all the time because it sounds boring we can say you know i don't know um, uh, yes i don't know if you have any question more or i try to play always i like to play in the same uh, area let's say if i am in a i try to play d and e here or if i am in a here let's say position five of uh, to D, I try to play here, yeah, I don't slide, for example, if I am in A here, when I go to D, I don't do this, I don't go, I don't slide to D and play the same position one, you know, you have five positions, so let's try to use uh, all the positions, you know, to, to play, you know, because it's the same notes, we play the same five notes, so why it's, you don't need you don't need to do this, you know, just search, just uh, play here, you know, position four or three of D, position four or three of E, you know, um, same for the arpeggios, you know, uh, you can stay here. Shuffles, for example, it's a uh, it's uh, a very simple and difficult thing to play. You know, I think shuffle is is one of the most iconic rhythms in blues. You know, so you have to be careful. You have to listen to a lot of shuffles. You have many super different shuffles depending of which style of blues you are listening to. You know. It's not, it's not the same uh, Texas Shuffle. When I say Texas Shuffle, it's not the classic. It's not the steep, you know? Yeah, that's a one of the shuffles. That's a Stevie Ray Shuffle, you know? Uh, uh, Texas. It's a big state with a lot of blues players from Tibon Walker, uh, Albert Collins, Jimmy Vaughan. You know, listen to you have to listen to Jimmy Vaughan because he's a master of this style. You know, I mean, blue Texas blues. You know, um, uh, or or West Coast blues. Of course, Chicago blues, but that's a different stuff. You know, it's another. Uh, approach to me that's a personal a very personal feeling you know um, what else uh, I don't know look at me I will try to do something here no it's okay so yes shuffle you so pay attention you can play from here from the bridge to here I used to play I like to play play more than the Jimmy Bogan or Kid Ramos style of, of shuffle, you know, what, what that means next to the bridge, you know, to get that sparkly uh, sound. Jimmy, it's, um, of course, Jimmy didn't do this. So you play the root, the A. Yeah. So it's here, you know, just two strings. I play next to the bridge because I like the sound here. If I change, well, I'm using the 
middle pickup. Uh, if I play more here next to the neck, it will sound it will sound more fat, you know. Um, you need to get the groove here. It's here. It's not here. The thing, you know, here it's super simple, you know. The groove. It's in the right hand. Uh, I don't know. I practice this a lot. Uh, even you can do it in front of a mirror, just to watch your right hand. You know what? Uh, how it's? How you attack the strings? You know. The thing is, try to copy that shuffle or that groove you listen to and you like it. Try to copy it. You know. That's the thing. You have to copy, you know. Hello, Mark Price. How are you? Um, try to copy, you know. I, I learn. That's another thing, you know. You have to listen to blues. That's what I say to my students, you know. Hey, Martin, can you teach me leaks or whatever? Yes, I can't do it, but listen to blues and learn the leaks from that players, that artist. You love, you know, that sound, that feeling you, you, you know. I learn leaks, all my vocabulary, you know. It's like learning a new... I'm using here 11 uh, mark, yes, the, the strings. I use it all my life, Dario. And I use 11.52, I think it's, yes. Because sometimes I put 56 here the bass, because I like that fat sound, you know. Um, yes, 11, uh, I don't know, my kids, they took the <laughs> the package, you know, uh, because I changed strings, so um, it's been a, a week. So, uh, yes, 50, 11, 52 is are this, the Dario. And as I told you, about you have to listen to blues. I listen to a lot of Ronnie Earl, Duke Robillard, because I, 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 you know, I feel, I love that feeling of that guys, you know, that of, of that players, you know. Uh, I listen to a lot of uh, well, uh, Kid Ramos, uh, Jimmy Vaughn, for of course, Stevie Ray was my first, my first. I discovered blues through through Stevie Ray. Of course, I'm 43 years old, so I am a... Oh, thank you, Jasper. Um, I discover I discover blues guitar. I will try to put it this because you don't see my face. But anyway, you have, don't have to see my face. You have to hello. You have to see my my guitar, my fingers here. But when it well, anyway, just I discover. I discover blues through Stevie Ray, you know, as all the 40s and 50s years old people now. And that was my first love, you know. And then Johnny Winter, but to me it was too rock. I prefer the more bluesy thing, you know, more blues jazz. Uh, but anyway, I learned a lot from, in the 90s, you know, from Johnny Winter I had. I have all his lot of albums, you know, from Stevie, from Johnny Winter, and then, as I told you, that was that that's more blues rock, yeah. Even Stevie Ray, you know, it's blues rock. And then I discover, as I told you, Duke Robillard. I discover Ronnie Earl. I discover uh, Anson Vandenberg. I discover well, Jimmy Vaughan, you know. As I told you, Jimmy, it's crazy, you know, you have to pay attention to Jimmy. Actually, uh, Stevie Ray, he learned from his brother, you know. And what else? Uh, Kid Ramos and all that band in the 80s with uh, Hollywood Fats, J uh, Mr. Hartman in on Harp, you know. Uh, who else? I don't know. Dozens and hundreds of players. I don't remember now. Chris Kane, you know, Chris Kane now is is famous because uh, Bonamassa uh, he he said something good from Chris Kane. 
I listened to Chris Kane, it's been a few years ago from through my teacher who teach me, who taught me all what I know of the blues guitar in Argentina. And, um, Chris Kane is crazy, no? He used to play with uh, Albert King. So he asks, when you provide over two of our blues, what scale do you use over the fourth chord? Well, Mark, as I as I as I told you a few minutes ago, I use minor pentatonic scale always, but that that name of minor is tricky because the minor third I don't used to used to play it straight, you know. I just play a quarter bending or I just go to the major third straight. So I try to avoid that crash between the the minor third of the scale and the major third of the chord. So this change, be careful if you are playing over a minor blues. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all what I say it's over the major dominant blues. If you play a minor blues, like the thrill is gone, that's minor blues. So you 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 won't have any problem with the minor pentatonic scale. You know, just over the four, over the four and fifth. As I told you, I play that. Uh, I change, you know, I change scale for for to to A. I play A minor pentatonic scale with the trick in the third. To D, I play minor pentatonic scale with the trick in the third. To E, I play the same stuff, you know, a minor pentatonic scale with that trick in the minor third. BB King, of course, you yeah. know, BB King, Albert King. Uh, what? Uh, who else? Uh, well, I don't remember now. I, I, Dozens, as I told you, and um, no, dozens, yeah. Um, <coughs> okay, it's, it's enough of my face. Let's play a little bit. <coughs> so, yes, uh, well, shuffle too, you know. Yeah, well, that's a minor, that's a minor major third. Of the minor pentatonic scale in the key of minor third, it's open string, major third is there. So when you play the E, Mark, what's the secret to mix the major and the minor? But there's no secret, it's just practice. There's no secret, just practice. If you practice, if you try to play as 12 bar blues. A 12 bar blues, let's say in the key of A or the key you want to play, you, you prefer. If you play like two hours a day, trying to follow with the chords, in a few months you will get it. You know, it's about time and practice. You know, it's it's more, it's time. It's, it's just sit and try to, you by ear, using your ear is your best tool. It's the only real thing, is the ear here, you know. It's, it's not a scale, it's not a theory, I, uh, uh, you have to know, you have to learn theory, you know, but the ear is your, it's your north, it's your GPS or your compass, you know, uh, just put a very slow blues, Don't, I, I'm not a fan of the backing tracks, because when you practice using backing tracks, you have drums, bass, piano, saxophone, two guitars, you know, it's too many instruments, too noisy. You need just a drum and a bass. So I use the band in a box, the, or I use the metronome and I record myself playing. So I practice, I record myself like 20 minutes playing a shuffle in the key of A, of E or A, like this or like this. There's no secrets. No problem, Mark. Uh, just, just uh, Joe. Uh, I notice many of your videos you play. Uh, this strat, uh, this strat, it's not a Fender. I have it called here, but it's not a Fender. So I bought my new tuner. Well, this is I, I, <laughs> I, I. <laughs> Okay, a new tuner, the poly poly tune is super good. You know, I I, I need to charge. You know, then uh, Jose, 
Uh, I need to charge some money to these people. <laughs> so my, my Strat, it's a copy of a 57th, it's not a Fender, it's just a luthier from Argentina, where I come from. He built it to me in 2000, in the year 2005. So it's a beautiful relic uh, Strat, Texas special pickups. And I would like to change this. It's been from 2005 I played this Texas. Same setup, you know. I don't. I didn't change anything, even the bridge, anything. Uh, but I would like to change because I found the Texas Special after 2005, uh, is uh, five, 2015, ten years. Is after 13 years, <laughs> I find this. Pickups two with two middles, you know, it's too like with, if you speak with the, your nose like this, you know. So, um, have you heard tail? Uh, thanks, Mark. Is possible to watch a video tomorrow? I think yes. It's uh, will be this video will be online on my YouTube uh, channel after I finish. It's my first live, so I think yes. Uh, well, about my Strat, it's a copy, a relic. Uh, I would like to change the pickups. How important is the right hand technique? Ah, I'm a beginner and just can't have a peak. Yes, well, uh, peak, oh, yeah, that's a good question. Peak, I play like this, with the round, with the round side. I don't play like this, you know, I don't play like this. The tremolo, it's, uh, I have four, yeah, it's locked. I have four, I don't use the tremolo. I don't, I use it before, I, when, when I say before, it's in 2006, I use tremolo. But then, you know why? Because uh, if, you, if you cut a, a string, everything becomes chaos, you know? You lose the tuning of all the guitar. But if, if, you, if you put it, very tight using four or, or five you don't have any problem if you cut the string playing live you can play with the other five strings uh, and they stay they stay tuned you know in tune you know tuning so sorry my accent sometimes and uh, so that's why it's locked yeah and the peak i use this the round side because i find well, that's a thing that I learned from Matt Scofield. I met Matt Scofield two, two years ago here in Montreal in the Jazz Festival. I played in the Jazz Festival. And next day, uh, uh, Matt Scofield played. So I had my pass, which is around here. Yeah, it's here. Uh, so I went to, to meet, uh, to meet Matt Scofield and we talk about some the peak and he showed me he peak, he plays like this. Also then I discovered that Stevie Ray used to play like this. I don't know, I'm not sure. So it sounds the sound when you play. So look, I will play just a straight A chord. Round. And now with the standard peak like this. You know? It's more Brighty. I prefer the, the round because it's more round, yeah. You know, it's more like kind of fat, you know. You need to uh, I try to answer the question before. It's like uh, there's no secret when you connect, when you just sit down and take your guitar and very slow. Yes, you have to go to see much coffee. It's a really, to me, it's 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 the it's one of is the best blues player now. When I say blues, it's not traditional. It's a modern blues player, you know. Uh, and he used I I learned a lot from him. I listen to his his I listen to his music and I learn licks and his approach. To the to the to the to the blues to the minor pentatonic scale it's it's very Josh Smith uh, yes of course another 
uh, modern blues player, you know, uh, uh, amazing. I prefer Matt Scofield because I, I like his approach. It's not too jazzy. Sound sometimes uh, sounds jazzy, but he's playing the pentatonic scale, you know. So uh, he he doesn't use uh, any jazz scale. Sometimes he plays the diminished, <laughs> diminished. <coughs> sorry, the diminished uh, without the peak. Uh, well, I, it's super important. You have to play with your fingers. You have to play. It's, uh, you have you, you will get a different sound, and you depending what style of blues you are playing. Uh, yes, of course, Robin for mixing. He's the master, you know. He's the he was to me. He was the first to mix blues and and jazz. You know, the fingers super important. Just I put my pick here. Ralph, the best way to learn to improvise blues on scales, get more blues feeling. Uh, yes, just sit down, listen to blues, and uh, listen to blues, try to copy, try to learn vo vocabulary, and, uh, and practice, create, just find your own connection between scales, you know, if you are in a... Well, I thought it's 41 minutes, okay, I, I, I say, okay, we'll talk 10 minutes, and let's say, I can't stop talking now. Um, I talked uh, about two blue notes, which is the fifth flat and the major third, and the third blue note, to me, is a minor seventh. Yeah, this one. It's good also if you work with some little bendings. Here. Yeah. So between minor and major seven, we don't use the major seven in blues, but something in between the quarter bending sounds blues here. You know? Can you see my? I will do it slowly. So look. Uh, minor pentatonic scale in the key of A. Yeah, look here. Fa, fifth flat, the first blue note. Minor seventh with a little thing here, you know. It's, 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 it's not even a quarter bending, I think. It's like. It's like try to uh, avoid the sound of the minor seventh, you know. In yeah, I continue with the root. Uh, wait, just a second. Just a second. Uh, are you there? Are you there? I'm still alive. My 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 kids and my wife they came back. <laughs> So, and the door was closed. So, um, about blue notes. Uh, uh, yes, the fifth flat. The minor seventh, be careful here. And the minor major third, you can play straight the major third. Or you also quarter bending. It's like a slide, you know? It's, it's... There's always... It's kind of, you know, uh, 
I don't know how to explain it, you know. But yes, there's no secrets. There's no there's no magic keys. There's no shortcuts. You have to see it. Take your guitar and listen to blues and um, listen to blues and uh, copy copy shuffles, copy rhythms, copy licks, you know, I, I copy, copy licks, copy licks um, but be careful, uh, my technique is to learn, it's like I listen to an album or a song and I try to, uh, I, I don't copy all the solo, you know, just I pay attention to the little things that keep my attention, you know uh, for example, I remember one day I was listening to Ronnie Earl. Um, he has a, he played a lick. He, he played a lick. Yeah. I say, what is that? You know, that is a double, double two, two, two string. It's a nice lick, you know, that that kept my attention, you know. You know, again, uh, I am in key of B now. Blue note. That minor seven. Boxes, you know, that's super important. You you have to know very well the five boxes of the minor pentatonic scale. There's no shortcut. You have to do it. You know, learn it by by heart. You know, it's like I don't know the cooperation, but it's like <coughs> I don't know. No, you know, it's just you have to do it. You know, there's then if if you know, if you are sh very sure with, of the pattern. Then you can start working from there, you know. You need to know the pattern, the, the five boxes, you know, it's super easy. Uh, five, yeah, okay, three. Uh, it's better if you know the five, uh, because you know why. Uh, one day in 2003, 2004, I don't remember very well, I said, okay, I'm playing here. I was playing like this, I didn't know which are that three patterns, you know, it's these and then you do these and then you do this yeah, the classic the classic, yes, I know uh, yes, exactly, yes uh, so, and one day I say, okay, I don't, it's okay, I, I was playing like that, you know, using this You know, you are playing the five notes, but I say, okay, I want to play here in A. I want to, what happened here, what happened here, what happened here, you know? So, that's why you, you need to learn that, the five boxes, you know? So, yeah, here are the bass strings, you know? I remember I practiced, one day I was practicing, like, was practicing like a month playing the scales, the five patterns. Only the only these three strings, you know, on the top, the, the bass. discover all the sounds here and here that I never played before because I didn't know the positions or I didn't know the patterns or whatever you know or I say okay one day you say okay finished I, I, I need to learn this because I want to play here you know and here and here and here every in all the neck you know 
<coughs> it doesn't matter which scale, which uh, keynote, you know, E, F, B flat. You have to, you have to practice in B flat. It's a very B flat. It's a jazz key. <laughs> Super weird key, you know, uh, but play like the stuff. Yeah, just stay in the F. It's almost an hour, uh, and I will do this uh, maybe each uh, weekend. Just uh, prepare your questions, you know. Um, uh, oh, thanks to you, German, German. What's it? What's it? How you spell it? German in English? I don't know. And in Spanish, it's German. So, yes, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Uh, well, see you soon. Thank you very much. Martin. Mm -hmm.